Hello everyone, my name is Anna and thank you so much for tuning into my channel today. I really, really appreciate it. So as you may have seen from my username, I have officially changed my username to Witchy Girl Anna. That is going to be my username on all platforms from here on out. I thought it would be a lot easier than me having like different usernames on different platforms is just very inconsistent and it also can be very confusing. So that is why I changed it. I'm now Witchy Girl Anna. It was a tough debate between my spiritual journey and Witchy Girl Anna, but that's what I'm gonna go with. So yeah, well welcome to Witchy Girl Anna's first official YouTube video as Witchy Girl Anna on all platforms. Sit down, have a cup of tea, make yourself comfortable. Today we're going to be talking about daily magical practices that are not necessarily all direct like spell work, but definitely magical witchy things that you can incorporate into your daily life. And it is also going to be equally something that people in the broom closet can practice. It's going to be very low key magic that is super easy to incorporate into your life and also very discreet because I know there are a lot of younger witches that follow me on different platforms that have talked about how they still live with their parents and their parents are, you know, just not comfortable with witchcraft and so they have to kind of keep it secret so that they don't have like consequences and punishment. So I definitely think that you guys could get a lot of benefit out of this video because there's just so many different ways to practice witchcraft without, you know, pulling out potions and jars and creepy things and, you know, making it very, very obvious. And if you're in that situation, I'm so sorry that you feel like you have to hide who you are and that there are so many closed minded people out there. But I want you to know that there is a big community online and there's also probably a big community where you live and you may not even be aware of it, of people who are in the broom closet or who practice witchcraft. Craft. So just know that you're not alone and unfortunately there are people, particularly Christians a lot of times, um, well it's it's people of different religions but a lot of times I've noticed Christians are the ones who tend to be the most closed minded. They have a very skewed view of what witchcraft is, it's actually a really positive thing and I could rant about it all day but, but I know that, that those people exist and so this video is definitely going to help you guys be able to navigate that while you're still living at home or whatever situation you're in where you feel the need that you have to do it kind of discreetly or privately. So we'll go ahead and get into the daily practices that I like to do and that I recommend and the broom closet witchery tips. So the first tip that I will give you guys is how you stir your coffee or tea. So you can stir with intention if you did not know that already. And if you did, I'm just reminding you that that is a very easy way to incorporate witchiness into your daily life. So if you stir clockwise, that is invoking something into your life. So you, as you stir clockwise, you can say, I want to bring in good luck and good fortune today or whatever it is that you would like to invoke. If you stir counterclockwise, that is for banishing. So if you want to get rid of something in your life, that is when you would set that intention is stirring counterclockwise. So you could say, okay, I want to get rid of all this negativity in my aura today. So I'm going to stir my tea counterclockwise or coffee, whatever you like to drink, or it doesn't even have to be tea or coffee. Those are just examples of things that you would stir, but it can be literally anything you stir. If you ever cook, you can cook and stir like clockwise or counterclockwise. So. so another form of daily magic or broom closet witchery is intention baths and intention showers. So you can easily take a shower with intention and I actually really like to take seated showers. There's something about them that is so magical. Like when you turn the shower on but you just lay down in the shower, like a shower bath I guess you could call it, and just watching the water flow off of your body and just thinking about like this is washing away the negativity in my body. It, it's something about it is so so magical it's almost like you're if you if you take that moment and observe it's like you're watching yourself from like a different perspective almost you can also 
do different types of enchantments like in the shower or bath like some people like to put herbs in their bath I know it's not as discreet but you could buy something that has herbs mixed into it that's a, technically like some kind of Epsom salt and you can easily pass that off as like oh look I got this like new bath mix or whatever different herbs have different representations so this is rose so I could easily put this in my bath and rose represents love and you know I can use it as like a love spell but I know that that's kind of a little bit pushing the broom closet thing but it's just something very easily accessible that you can do and like I said there's tons of bath mixes you can buy that have herbs in them like lavender and like chamomile and things like that things like that on jams. <laughs> but yeah so definitely just remember that and just know that if you do anything with intention that it can be magical another form of daily magic as well as broom closet magic is glamour magic and if you don't know what glamour magic is it is just enchanting the way that you get ready whether that be makeup or hair or even picking out your outfit in a way that makes it magical so for example what I like to do is when I'm applying my foundation I like to make sigils with my foundation before I blend it in so if you don't know what a sigil is it's a representative symbol so you could definitely do that like no one's gonna know that like that's what you did when you got ready and it's a way that you can protect yourself and invoke whatever you want whether that be um, protection or whether that be uh, love or self-love or you know whatever it is that you are trying to do it is a very discreet and simple and easy way to bring that magic into your life you can also use color magic, which kind of goes back into glamour magic, but you can use like colored eyeshadow. For example, if you want to have good luck, you can use green eyeshadow. Again, self-love, you can use pink or, you know, desire or passion, red, like whatever it is that reflects what you want to invoke magically, use that on the outside. And, and not only just in your makeup, but also in other things you do, for example, like you can wear like green underwear for good luck, or you can use a green pen at school or at work if you are trying to invoke luck. So there's definitely like really discreet ways of practicing magic and um, color magic is definitely a really cool example. Color magic can be used in so many different ways. I mean, you can get really creative with it. There's definitely a lot of different ways that you can use color magic. So one thing that I do a lot when I am out in public, especially is I like to veil. And if you don't know what veiling is, it is using a protective covering over your head to keep negative energy from absorbing into your hair. So if you put like a headband on that can kind of veil you a little bit, this has definitely helped me a little bit today, but you can also use like a hat or you can use a bandana or a bonnet or whatever is comfortable for you to wear. There is definitely a lot of ways to protect your head and I think it is very, very powerful. I mean, I have noticed a significant difference as to when I veil versus when I don't. It just gets kind of hot sometimes, but it is definitely very powerful and protective. And, you know, maybe they don't allow hats at school, but like I said, you can do a headband or even if you put your hair up in a bun, that's very protective of the majority of your hair. Um, maybe the end might absorb a tiny bit of energy, but it's better than like your whole head being so susceptible to everybody you pass by energy so yeah so one thing that is very witchy and very discreet because it is also very popular is using a jade roller so these are actually made with the rose quartz crystals you can find them with different crystals like green adventuring and even amethyst but it's very good for protecting your skin as well as good for you magically it feels so cooling and like just good it reduces like wrinkles and I won't get into the whole skincare part of it but it's really good for circulation and reducing wrinkles and it just cools off your skin so nicely but the fact that it's a crystal and you can just roll it on your face to invoke that feeling is so so magical and cool and very very discreet and simple you can keep it by your bedside or you can keep it in your bathroom I recommend maybe rinsing it off to number one clear out negative energy but also because they can get a little bit dirty if you don't take good care of them but it's very very good for your skin and magically so 
Yeah. Another witchy thing that you can do for your daily practice or if you're in the broom closet is daily meditation. And I actually highly recommend this for all witches, whether you're in the broom closet, whether you're out of the broom closet, wherever you are, you need to be meditating a lot. And that is to keep your vibration higher, to keep you spiritually in tune. Um, I think meditation is the biggest and most important thing that anyone can do at all, period. I think it, it there's so many different benefits to it. There's health benefits, there's spiritual benefits, there's emotional benefits, there's mental health benefits. There's so many benefits to meditating and it also aligns you in a way that the more you meditate, the more you align your chakras and it can very well put you in touch with other realms and that's a whole other video, but it is by far the most important witchy thing I think anyone can do. I would say even more important than like, like setting intentions, <laughs> like, like possibly, well, I guess you have to set intentions to meditate, so maybe it's equal, but meditation, you need to do it. There's so many different ways to meditate. I'll make a video on that at some point, but definitely know that that is very important and it's something that you should do. I'm not recommending it. I'm telling you, meditate. Another form of daily magic that also doubles as broom closet witchery is using talismans and charms and amulets. So there is so much power in charming a piece of jewelry to wear throughout your day. You can spiritually charge jewelry by setting it next to crystals. You can charge it by just speaking to it. There are so many different ways that you can spiritually charge things and I think that it is a very discreet form of magic. For example, I work with a lot of people who aren't the witchiest of people and I don't know that they would fully judge me if I told them that I were a witch, but there are times that I like to just keep that kind of private. So I like to wear necklaces that have a little witchiness to them but aren't necessarily like screaming what I do and who I am. And I think that's, it's just a really nice touch and it can make you feel very, very protected. I recommend using a protective necklace. That is just the best way to go. But you can also find like little charms, whether that be some kind of rock you find or some kind of stone that you buy at the store. This is like peace or something like that on it. And just speak to it, set your intentions with it. And I promise you, it will definitely be very, very helpful to you. That's actually one of my, pretty much like part of my routine. If you are uncomfortable like setting things next to crystals, whether you be in the broom closet or not, I think using a jade roller is a very good hack to charging things with crystals. Like you can easily set a necklace next to your rose quartz jade roller and you're charging it with crystals whether or not you realize it, you know? So like if your mom walks in your bathroom and they she sees a necklace right next to your jade roller, she's just gonna be like, oh, Anna just left her necklace out. And it's not gonna be like, oh, she's doing witchcraft. So, I mean, no one sees this as like witchy, you know, for the most part, so yeah. If you are in a place where you can use crystals, you can definitely put them in your bra or keep them in your pocket. I love keeping black tourmaline in my pocket and I really want to make a black tourmaline necklace. I actually had one and it fell off. So I think it protected me from something or either I'm really bad at keeping up with stuff, probably a little bit of both. But yeah, there's so many different crystals that are really good to keep on you, but I definitely think black crystals are the most protective, but you can invoke different things with different crystals. So that's definitely something to research. And also you could buy like a rose quartz like necklace, you know, and, and if you're discreet enough about it, that's, you know, an easy way to have a like witchy thing on you that you can use every day. So the way that you wipe your countertops is a really good way to practice magic in your daily life and this is going to be a little bit more for some of my like older witches you know ones who live out on their own but it's definitely a really good way to invoke magic again just wipe with intention so clockwise means to invoke something and counterclockwise means to dispose of something in your life metaphorically so but it, I guess it could be literally. So that's kind of where the magic comes in is when you bring something that's a metaphor into a literal sense and you join those together and then you sit with that intention and emotion. I think that's really where magic comes in. So 
definitely do that. And then finally, one that is 18 plus, if you're not over 18, click out of the video right now, that is your warning. And that is sex magic. So there is so much power in spicy magic. I have to be careful what I say because if I do get monetized on YouTube, then they might like get mad. There is definitely a lot of power in sex magic and you should definitely do your own research. I do have a video on my TikTok which is now Witchy Girl Anna. <laughs> Again, I changed my name on a lot of stuff on how to do this, but it is definitely a very, very powerful form of magic and it can be done solo or it can be done with a partner. And all it really is, is as you are completing your situation, <laughs> as you are coming to completion, you basically focus on what it is that you want to manifest or banish in your life and you just really sit with that because in that state you are in a very meditative state and you are in a very very good mindful headset to create things in your life that you want to create well thank you guys so much for watching i really really appreciate it and i would love for you to subscribe as well as check out my other socials they are all witchy girl anna instagram and tiktok and i will see you guys in the next video Bye.